Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Yes, I'm glad you liked my new trick, Miss Susan. <laughs> I learned something new this week. Getting it now that I know that volume works. Good morning. I just have to get myself organized here. I had loaded the wrong PowerPoint, so that's how I started. <laughs> I was like, holy moly, I'm glad I looked at that. I was like, that was not the right one, but that's okay. All fixed. Good morning. Well, welcome, everybody. Excited to learn today. We are going to work on learning about the circular embroidery attachment for the Bernina. I've also put on captions, automated generated captions this morning, so hopefully um, Facebook does a really good job. So if you are in bed and want to listen to me on mute, you could <laughs> and not disturb um, anyone. So thought we would give that a try. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Like I said, this morning we're going to talk about the circular embroidery attachment. Now in the world of Bernina, that is foot number um, 83 for those machines and for any machine. So this works for not just a um, new Bernina. This could be for what we call a legacy edition machine, which is going to be like the uh, 1130, 1230s, 1530s, 1630s, um, that type of thing. So that these accessories are also available for those older Berninas as well. And we have them um, available. Well, the older ones can be special ordered, but the, the current line machines can use the ones we have in stock. So it looks just like what you see here on the screen. It's kind of odd looking. Um, comes with two screws, okay, and a screwdriver. So it also comes with instructions on how to attach it and things along that lines. This is one of the many tools that actually gets attached to the bed of your machine using those two holes that are to the right of your stitch plate that everybody always wants to know what they're for beyond swallowing your loose pins. Okay, um, this is usually the, the, hole, the escape hole for a lot of pins that end up in your free arm of your machine, especially the smaller um, silk and glass head pins that just fall down that hole. So this, the attachment will actually attach here. You get two screws in the box. One is an extra, okay? You can line up the attachment to match the um, hole that you're going to use and screw it in. Don't over screw it. We don't need to be a superhero and, you know, really crank it in. You just need it to be tight enough that it's going to hold. Okay. Oops. Wrong button. And that pin or the screw itself is flat so that the fabric that we're going to attach to this attachment can easily slide over top of that screw. On the other side of where it screws in at, there is a very sharp pin, okay? It is covered with a small rubber, rubber clear rubber cap. Um, that is designed and called the positioning pin. Now we're working in the world of circular, so everything today is circles, right? So this would be, that pin would be what would we call the center of your circle. We're going to push our fabric down over top of that pin, and then we are going to attach the rubber cap, okay? That rubber cap is important. One, you don't end up puncturing yourself with um, that positioning pin. It's also going to keep the um, fabric attached to the um, unit, whereas if you don't put the cap on there, it's hard to keep flat um, the fabric. That positioning pin moves left and right along the um, attachment. 
Okay, those little grooves, each one of those grooves represents a size of a circle. Okay, so we kind of push down on that and slide it out or slide it in depending upon um, how big or small you want to circle. And I will um, show you that in just a minute. Okay, so just so you can see here. I have this piece of painter's tape on there holding my um, <laughs> holding my screw so that it doesn't um, get misplaced. But here is your positioning pin. It slides in and out, okay? And that little rubber cap is over top of that pin to keep, one, you from stabbing yourself. If you misplace this rubber cap, the ends of um, an eraser, if you pull the eraser off of a pencil, work really well. The um, cork from a cork bottle will work well too. You just need something to keep that um, fabric in place and from you from stabbing yourself. Okay. So what size circles? Amy, you say that I can sew in circles. We're gonna do a little geometry, okay? So the circumference of a circle is the distance from start to end all the way around the circle. The diameter is the distance from left to right from inside the circle. And the radius is from center of the circle to the outside edge. Your positioning pin is equal to the radius of the circle. Okay. And so if you wanted a, you know, four inch big circle, then you would need your positioning pin to be at like two inches so that you could get a four inch circle. Okay. So you would take the diameter of your circle and divide that in half. And that's going to give you the size, um, circle that you need for, or not really circle that you need the size or the location that you need to position your positioning pin to get your circle. The, Circular attachment is capable of doing a circle from one and a half inches up to 10 inches. Okay, so very big that it is capable of using and doing. You have two ways of attaching this to your machine. You can attach it to the machine so that the um, positioning pin is on your right and you can attach it to the machine so the positioning pin is on your left okay depending upon which way you attach it is going to depend upon how the machine sews the circle whether it goes clockwise or counterclockwise okay so in the picture that you see right now if the positioning pin is on your left of the presser foot your circles will sew clockwise. And if your positioning pin is on the right um, of your presser foot, the machine is going to sew counterclockwise. Okay. And that's not a huge deal in the world, of, you know, decorative stitches. It's going to be a matter of do you want the flower or something that isn't symmetrical to point in or point out. Clockwise or counterclockwise really makes a difference uh, with lettering, if you're going to stitch lettering in. Let's see, we have these upside down pins. Okay, so just as a visual, when sewing counterclockwise, so we sewed a circle, okay? When we sew counterclockwise, the stitching would be facing the inside of the circle. And if we sewed counterclockwise, we would be on the outside of that circle. It all relates back to the direction of which a decorative stitch points. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that better? Let's see. Sound is too low. Sound is too low. Let's. I'll wait a second and see if. Hmm. 
I think that's. Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. All right, so let me repeat that. Sorry about that. The um, circle here that you see is just a standard circle. And if you sew counterclockwise, if your flower has a direction to it, it's going to um, point to the inside. And if we attach the attachment to the machine and sewed in a clockwise direction, you are going to get your flower to point to the outside. Okay, so there are some directional opportunities that you can have to get your um, decorative stitches to go certain ways um, and things along that lines. Okay. All right. So there are more things that you can do with the circular embroidery beyond just decorative stitches, okay? First up, basic circles. In terms of just being able to sew with a simple straight stitch, okay? And uh, use a quilt, use it for quilting, okay? Overlapping circles, um, things along that lines. Very easy, simple, quick, fast. You just load the, um, your quilt sandwich right on top of the positioning pin and stitch and move it anywhere that you want to stitch a circle. Okay. Fancy circles. So um, the fancy circles are using your decorative stitches to just do a variety of circular designs in all those decorative stitches that you have on your machines. So it's the perfect use. You always wanted to know why you had those stitches. Here is the place to use them. Okay. Um, you can also use your Foot to create circular appliques. Okay, so we do it in a two-step technique. The first step, we would um, applique the circle. So we would position our pin where we want it, place a square of fabric or a swatch of fabric over top of the pin, stitch the straight stitch of the circle that we want, trim the excess fabric up to the line of stitching, and then change over to the decorative stitch that you would like to go around your raw edge to finish it off. No needing to do on the sewing machine. You know, when we sew circles, it's like you take three stitches, you stop and pivot, take three stitches, stop and pivot. This is going to help you stay in a nice smooth circle versus kind of getting maybe even a slightly jagged direction. Anything, any technique that you can do with your sewing machine, you can do with the um, circular embroidery attachment attached to it, okay? So if you can, all we do is we change presser feet because the presser foot has nothing to do with the circular attachment, okay? You can use your number one foot. You can use a couching foot. You can use a number 20, a 34 all those feet can be used. So you can use pretty much any stitch, any presser foot, and any technique with this particular um, attachment. So here on the screen here, we have, this is couched. So using uh, foot 25, you could couch down cords and use um, decorative stitches to hold them down. Here's a circular pin tuck. Uh, using one of the many pen tuck feet that we have. You can also do that with this particular attachment. And then circular lettering. You can easily write in a circle. Okay. And you program it into your machine just like you would if you were if you were going to stitch it straight. 
and then you attach it to the um, circular embroidery attachment and then it stitches. This is where it's going to make a difference as if you go clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so you can see in this image the word Bernina, the top of the letters are on the inside of the circle and the circular embroidery attachment is on the underside of the circle. Okay, the bottom of the words are inside the circle. So depending upon if you have the machine, this is counterclockwise and this is clockwise. Okay, and then this is beading that's been attached using the circular embroidery attachment as well. So we have some tips because yes, as much as we like for things to, you know, work kind of right out of the box without an issue, um, we do need to test this. And so I have some tips for you. One, you do need a flat surface. So if, if you're trying to do a large quilt or, or a large section, you want this to be as flat as possible because any sort of drag or hanging of the fabric, the machine um, has a hard time pulling things evenly and nicely. Okay, you want to use stabilizer. Fuse it to the back, spray it to the back, do something to hold all of the fabric and stabilizer together. It is very important that you have adequate stabilizer because this truly is the key to good circular embroidery attachment. Okay, always use the rubber cap. Use any decorative stitch, a utility stitch, just make sure that you pick the right presser foot for that stitch. And you can adjust the width, length, needle positions, all of the decorative settings that you would like for that particular stitch. Always do a sample first, okay? Make sure that, um, one, that your fabric will move on the positioning pin because if it won't move or rotate freely, you're not going to get the look that you want. When you are stitching, you don't want to push or pull. The foot and the machine and the attachment will feed the circle. Okay. If you want equal concentric rings, uh, you want to go at least two notches apart. Okay. Every time you move, that's going to give you nice uh, spacing and concentric rings that um, won't um, touch each other. Change thread, add stitches. Um, if you are using decorative stitches and you don't want to, uh, you want to make sure that you can begin and end with a full pattern. You may want to um, use the odd number positions. Okay. If you move in odd number notches, you have a good chance of the stitch patterns always matching when you get back around to the beginning. Okay. And so that's that right there is a huge tip because that's where a lot of people, um, I don't want to say stress, but we get really particular because I mean, who wants to be stitching a heart and come around and have half a heart at the end? You really want it to end with full hearts. Now, when you are finished with your search, your circles and stitching your circles, it's probably going to be a little wavy. It's probably going to need a little bit of pressing. Okay. And so we will press the, um, item. Okay. You can lay it upside down or wrong side up on the pressing mat, a little bit of water on the back and, um, use a pressing cloth and give it a good press. That center pinhole will disappear and it would help help relax and kind of lay everything down nice and smooth. Pattern end is a function that is great for using here and we're going to talk about pattern end. We're also going to talk about using the balance and the elongation function as well as stitch length. Okay. 
or if you don't want to worry about that, this right here is like the perfect thing because you're going to cover up all your start and ends with another circle. <laughs> Nothing, um, you can have overlapping circles, so this is all decorative stitches, just partial circles, and then there was an applique circle that was done on top of the one section to cover an opening or the section where everything kind of came together in that aspect, okay? So let's talk about pattern begin and pattern end, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the machine, um, so that you can uh, see something here. So pattern begin and pattern end have been on the machines for a long time. This is not new in um, that aspect of the machines. Give me one second. I want to try to fix something. Okay, so on the machines themselves, pattern end and pattern begin are, could be in different locations depending upon the um, machine. But for the most part, the icons are the same. Okay, this is pattern begin is either a triangle with the line at the top and pattern end is a triangle with the line at the bottom. In some of the um, previous Activa machines, these were half circles with lines at the top and lines at the bottom, okay, um, that were there. Pattern begin, if you are sewing a decorative stitch on the machine, okay, and you, let me get to a decorative stitch and then I'm gonna show you. me okay so pattern begin if you are sewing a decorative stitch and you stop in the middle of the stitch typically on your screens for the newer machines you are going to get this triangle with the line in the beginning line at the top right in the middle of your screen okay this is a visual to let you know that you have stopped in the middle of the pattern, okay? And that if you were to remove the fabric from the machine without using the scissor cutter um, and were to move it over to a new location, it's gonna start right where this one stops, okay? So you want to um, be conscious of that. If you wanted to reset it so that it would start at the beginning of the pattern again, all you need to do is touch that icon. You touch that icon, it goes away, and your needle position returns to the beginning of a repeat, okay? Pattern end is going to be a button typically on the head of your machine, uh, usually above your slide speed controls, or for an 880, it is um, below the speed control, it is a button that is the triangle with the line at the bottom of it and when you press it it illuminates to let you know that you have activated it or on some uh, like my activas uh, you will get that icon will appear on your screen my uh, 730s 200s uh, along that lines and even the newer machines you'll actually also get a stop symbol that appears up on your screen to let you know that you have um, engaged it. So what that does is when you are sewing and you want to um, tell the machine to finish a pattern, you press that and the machine is going to continue sewing until it gets to the very last stitch of the pattern that you are on and then it will stop. Okay, so it's no more trying to guess am I Am I done? Is this pattern finished? Do I, do I have a couple more stitches? Things along that lines. So you're able to kind of know that you have officially finished a pattern repeat. Okay, so let me show you on the sewing machine. I'm gonna show you pattern repeat and things first. I'm not even going to um, put on the circular embroidery attachment yet. I wanna show you pattern. All right. So I'm going to pick a decorative stitch here and I'm going to sew 
and it's just going to be some little triangles. Okay, so I'm going to come down, I'm going to stop about halfway down. I'm going to take my foot, take my thread out of the machine. So I have three and a part of a triangle. Now I didn't use my thread cutter. If you use your thread cutter, the machine is automatically going to go back to the beginning of the pattern. Okay. All I did was take it out and cut my thread because if I were to come back here and start, it's going to start exactly where I left off my previous pattern. So here's the end of the triangle and there's the beginning of it, okay? If we were to sew here, and I'm sewing triangles, and I want to make sure that I am um, going to finish with a full triangle. As I am stitching, I'm going to reach up on my machine, I'm gonna do this so you can see it. I'm going to engage this button here. You can do this while you're sewing. You don't need to stop sewing. And my foot is still on the gas, okay? So I'll do it again. I'm gonna push that button. My foot is still pedal to the metal and the machine is stopped. And what that does, like I said, is guarantee that when I take this out, I have an exact full arrow or triangle, okay? That's there on that machine. Makes sense. Okay. The other thing that uh, many patterns have today is going to be um, pattern. Many machines today is pattern elongation. Okay. Elongation allows you to increase and decrease the length of a stitch pattern. Okay. And not affect the density of a stitch. And so sometimes when you're coming around a circle and you've got one more pattern, you know, you can fit in there. You can, you think, oh, I just need it to be a little bit bigger. And if you increase stitch length, it will make it a little bit bigger, but it could look slightly different than the other patterns that are in the circle. Okay. So pattern elongation allows you to stretch out a pattern uh, without adjusting um, and affecting stitch density. So let me show you pattern elongation. So here I've just picked a pattern, something that I know this is probably even better that you can see. I'm going to open up the eye on my machine and pattern elongation is going to be the triangle with an arrow at the top and the bottom. Okay. They also call it pattern extend. It's also known as stitch density on some of the other machines. Um, mostly you're gonna find these on the uh, seven and eight series machines. The five, the newer five series machines will have these as well. So if I go into pattern elongation or pattern extend, I, we have two options depending on the machine. Some of you only have one option and you have the most important one and that's pattern extend. And so I can stretch this pattern out, okay? And as you see, as I stretch that pattern out, it looks like the stitching is getting farther apart, but when I pause, it will adjust the stitches, okay? And so I can elongate this to be whatever I want it to be, and the system will adjust it. But many of you are probably like, well, I can just do that with my stitch length, right? And you can with stitch length, but look what happens when I increase the stitch length to get the same effect that I got with pattern elongation. Do you see how much looser and wider these stitches are? So this stitch density is not nearly 
as full as what we want um, it to look like. This would look very different than what other stitches on that circle look like. circular embroidery attachment. Just as a little tip. Okay. So if you are, um, this is counterclockwise, would be putting on, there we go. Counterclockwise here, I'm going to align the hole with the hole on my machine. Drop in my flat screw. And tighten. In terms of um, fabric stabilizer, you know, it's really up to you. I'm using um, I'm using some embroidery stabilizer. If you only want a circle in one particular area, um, you want to make sure that you cut a piece of stabilizer a couple of inches bigger than the circle that you're going to do. You don't need to stabilize the entire piece of fabric if you're only going to make a circle in one little corner. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to push that down on my pin and I'm going to put my cap on. And so I can kind of get an idea um, where my circle is going to go if I move my fabric. I'm going to go to a straight stitch first here, just so that you can see. My thread is fault. There we go. And I'm just going to start stitching. And hands off. I'm not, I'm not holding anything. And then I could, even without, you don't have to, I can cut my thread. I can slide, you know, one or two over from that. We can pick up a decorative stitch. choose pattern in. I can pick up another decorative stitch. And then if you wanted to do lettering, that would be um, about combi mode on your machine. So let me program my name in here. pattern in when it starts stitching the last stitch. There it is. There's your circle, all your decorative stitches. I could have moved my positioning pin to the outside so I could easily put this back into, maybe if I can get it in the same hole. Yep, there we go. And I can move my pin outwards. And Oops, push that too soon. sitting on the outside of the circle. And so that is just a little about what you can do with um, decorative stitches. And your holes. So those three tools, pattern begin, pattern end, and pattern 
three pieces. Oh, not pattern pieces, sorry. Pattern begin, pattern end, and um, pattern extend are three tools when I'm working with circular embroidery that I can't live without. And I can't live without it even when I am sewing just decorative stitches. I use those three tools all the time. I do want to point out one thing um, that some people may not know on their machines. Uh, the newer uh, classic line machines. When you choose a decorative stitch, okay, so let me pick a decorative stitch, and you know that across the top of your screen you get um, stitch width, and down the side of the machine you get stitch length. And some of you may be looking at the stitch length right now thinking, holy moly, that's really long. Why, why is this basting, okay, because you would think, I tell most of you that your machine stitch length is any, usually no more between six and nine millimeters in length, okay, and this stitch right now is reading 27.2, well, 27.2 is the length of one repeat, okay, the length of one repeat if my stitch length is at 3.2, okay? So I, if I make adjustments to my stitch length, I see instantly the adjustment of my um, repeat. Now, I tell you this only more along the lines of straight lines. Now, you could measure the circumference of your circle and figure out, you know, exactly what you need and make it divisible, and we can really pull out some major geometry and, and everything. But if you were sewing straight lines and you knew exactly how many millimeters you needed to fill that, you could spend a little bit of time adjusting your... Uh, repeat in length so that it would be evenly divisible by the length that you wanted. So, you know, if I had a two inch section that I wanted to fill in with this um, repeat, so if I brought this down to a 2.95 stitch length, that tells me that one repeat is, um, is uh, a quarter of an inch. It's 25, no, a quarter of an inch. 25 millimeters is one inch. So one repeat of this is one inch. Okay, so there's an inch. I knew that I had two inches to fill. I could set my machine to do four repeats. Would start my needle where I wanted it, sew at a nice, consistent, steady speed. And when it finished sewing the last of the fourth repeat, it would stop and that would fill my two inches. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Lots of information. But that number, that stitch length number throws some people off and throws them into a panic um, when they first get their machines because that is something that is newer on our Bernina machines. But it's really handy because back in the day, when, let's say, the latte quilt for those of you that have been around for a little bit and machine embroidered um, and decorative stitched quilts uh, were making their way out. There were a lot of decorative stitches um, in a, uh, a latte quilt. It was embroidery with decorative stitches that connected them and figuring out the math so that you could end and begin at the same and you know, and then you were testing and testing and testing, which is why I still only have like two blocks of my latte quilt finished. Um, because I just couldn't, I was being way too precise. I wanted it to be way too precise. Now, I probably, if I had time, would go back and redo it because the math is figured for me. And it makes it much easier for me to be able to fiddle with those adjustments than to be constantly stitching and measuring and stitching and measuring. So way, way, way easier today. I do have some resources for you. Let me move my head um, out of the way. And these resources, again, if you are 
um, go to our web page and you click on um, the YouTube tab on the web page and arrow down to the last option and click on presentation. That will open up this PDF of the presentation that we have and the very last page will be the resource page and these can be clicked, okay? You click them, they're gonna open up the link to an article and that article, if I didn't lose my mouse here, um, so like this particular quilt was all these circles were appliqued with the circular embroidery tool. Okay, and so there are instructions that walk you through um, those particular methods. And so there are um, a bunch of articles, a bunch of um, ebooks, how to make yo-yos with your circular embroidery attachment, how to applique, and things like that that are built into that presentation for you so that you can um, learn and use your tool even more than what you may have already been using it. Okay. Questions? Yes, I apologize for sound. I need to... Make Dr. Mike be quiet. Kick him out of the room when I'm talking to you guys. He's trying to counterbalance the noise he was making behind me, but apparently it didn't work very well today. So I need to do some more testing. This is a whole this is a whole nother world of things for me to learn. It's all about sound. So if we have a sound engineer that would like to come educate me, I will gladly, gladly take all the effort teaching me about sound all right well I thank everybody for joining me this morning and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and a fabulous day and we hope to see you soon thank you everybody bye